Every week we close the show with a recommendation from yours truly. It's the outshot. What is fast, cheap, and out of control? Well, there's an obvious answer. It's a documentary directed by Errol Morris. It's interviews with four men. The men are Dave Hoover, a lion tamer in the circus, George Mendonca, a topiary artist, Ray Mendez, a biologist who studies an animal called the naked mole rat, and Rodney Brooks, who makes robots at MIT. But with Errol Morris, it's never that simple. As these men tell the stories of their lives and work, their apparently wildly divergent lives and work, those stories start to interweave. The lion tamer talks about the workings of an animal mind. The roboticist wonders about the nature of consciousness. The biologist asks what makes a society. The topiarist thinks about the relationship between his hands and the living plants that he sculpts. Soon, we, the viewers, realize that we're not watching a film about unusual jobs. We're watching a film about life and, along with it, death. Brooks, who builds the robots, builds them simple, like insects, with rules that determine their behavior, not complicated programming, just a few simple rules. As the robots discover each other and trip over each other, they learn. And they send out simple signals, and they learn more from each other. He wonders if these learning, growing, developing robots will one day supplant humans. The thing is that if they do supplant humans, he doesn't say they'll be our enemy. He says they'll be our legacy. Often I've called the robots that we build artificial creatures. I like to think of them as prototypes towards entities which exist in the world and live in the world in the same way that animals live in the world. They may still be useful to us. You can have a chicken which lays eggs, but you don't tell the chicken, hey chicken, lay an egg every day. You just put the chicken in a chicken coop and give it food and out comes an egg every day. Mendez is fascinated by the mole rat because it's not so much an animal as a system. Their behavior is emergent. They have only a couple of inputs, some feedback from their jaws and a sense of smell. They're blind and hairless. They live in holes. They have tiny brains. But we see the complex societies that grow from their relationships with each other, from the way they're connected to each other. And Mendez makes clear that he watches these animals to learn more about himself. People just come and look. You wonder what they're looking at. It's not just this little miniature Sharpay with big teeth running around in a burrow. They're looking to find if there's a common ground. Look, they're doing this. Does that mean that this is going to happen? They're carrying a baby. Watch how the mother does it. They're constantly trying to find themselves in another social animal. Mendonca's topiaries emerge over years. With his hand shears, he shapes them as they grow. They can't be programmed, only pointed in the right direction, convinced gently that they should take some sophisticated form. The electric shears is all right for straight work. You cannot use them for detail. The ears on the animal, they're all carved out. They're not just a big blob, and uh, every ear is carved to detail. With electric shears, you can't do that. A little flip of the hand or something, you can lose the ear or a horn or you go a little too far in, the guy lost his foot. And Hoover, the lion tamer, has to think from an animal's point of view every day because his understanding of these huge cats is all that stands between him and death. And it's death that defines life. You try to keep the animal afraid of you in that he does not understand you. He does not understand that you're weaker than him. If you get injured during a wild animal act, you have to go ahead and finish the act. If you stop right then and leave the cage, the animal is liable to comprehend that he has hurt you. And then that is, that's it with that animal. Because physically, there's no way to really stop them except bluff them. Hey. These men are undoubtedly strange. They've dedicated their lives to these, frankly, weird pursuits, these tiny little windows. But as the pieces fall together in Fast, Cheap, and Out of Control, Errol Morris shows us 
that sometimes even a few tiny pinholes can show us the world. That's my